So to talk this as uh, one of the entity dalam permohonan geran kita adalah satu perkara yang uh, agak uh, penting. Yes, uh, saya must, uh, I admit that is is important dalam application program to think also about the strategy partnership that we are going to have dengan kita punya sponsor. Uh, but uh, in my case, mungkin uh, ada part di mana strategy partnership is applicable dan ada dalam kes uh, seperti grand-grand mohi itu kurang sikit dia punya uh, element of strategy partnership. So I will address it accordingly to the uh, slide yang saya akan tunjukkan nanti. Sebelum uh, saya uh, uh, terus dengan uh, Uh, some of the tip sharing on the grant application yang ada bagi government's uh, private sector dan juga some of the bit on the international collaborative efforts. Let me put myself uh, on my uh, 33 years uh, with UPM. I started uh, working in 1983 uh, under University of Pertanian Malaysia. I am the alumni of the uh, UPM and have the chance uh, to do my PhD in UK uh, with North Wales, uh, Bangor, then you got Plymouth. And uh, also during my time, I was lucky to be involved in ASEAN Australia project. And uh, I was given a good exposure in terms of training on microbental taxonomy and uh, also another training in Bremen, Germany uh, on the benthic ecology. And later on in JICA is University of Kyoto on Polycate Taxonomy. And uh, these are all my administrative experience that I have with UPM. I never go anywhere else. Uh, UPM has been my uh, single uh, employer until I retired last year. <coughs> and bit on my uh, output, uh, being the staff of UPMs, uh, I did my fair share on publication uh, and some other on uh, book and chapters and uh, several on the uh, conference papers, uh, positive report, which I don't include in this presentation because uh, it's more on the ground for research. And I have graduated 15 PhD students and nine master and still got three or four uh, in the uh, in the band to be graduated. So on the my expertise or my research experience, I've been working uh, on everything. I would say that uh, uh, since I was uh, I started my work with Faculty of Fisheries and Marine Science then move on to faculty of science, then now in faculty of agriculture, uh, the scope of work or research has been changing according to uh, prior, uh, uh, topic of interest at that time and also the uh, kind of grant that been offered. So I was lucky I started with ASEAN Australia uh, and also with JICA that was uh, during my time with faculty of Fisheries and Science which no more uh, existing in UPM. And then uh, many of the others is with Silmoti uh, IRPA. And also I got some uh, uh, grant from FRGS as well as uh, from UPM's uh, um, MOHI, uh, mainly on the work on the uh, some of the species of fin fish and also shellfish. Uh, uh, of our waters. Has some training with uh, taxonomy on uh, microbentos and marine fish through GSPS and us in Australia. And uh, I also, uh, together with Prosale as the program leader, we got grant under TRGS for last five years, I think. And uh, recently I got LRGS grant uh, of about 4.2 million on uh, Patimbua. And uh, also my present engagement with IQAS is more focused on the uh, microprecum udanggala and also uh, blue swimming crab with Ketam Renjong. And I got grant from UPM as well as from DOF. 
uh, these are the kind of work that I've been doing, try to uh, enhance the production of the uh, PL for microbrachium and also uh, try to promote uh, Pelagicus as one of the aquaculture species. And these are all the grants that I have been getting uh, quickly. Uh, uh, the big one, uh, the uh, Patimbua, uh, which uh, recently acquired. It's already a year, but not much progress uh, has been taking shape because of the uh, COVID uh, uh, MCO. And uh, got some money through Satrap uh, Otec, uh, of 100 k from Mohi. And uh, before that, I was involved with TRGS uh, with uh, Prosale on the Trobo Sarawak. And uh, a bit of money from uh, uh, UPM, it's not that, about half a million uh, through Grand IPB, both on Udangala and also on Ketam Renjung. And on private sector, we, me and Prof Matara and Prof Japa, uh, together with Dr. Lina, we managed to secure funding from uh, Forest City. This uh, amounted to 2.35 million. So this is one that uh, I can say a bit on our experience. And also uh, on the consultancy side, we are working closely with ASMA for the monitoring of Tragea Lake with Prof Fatima and uh, Cities by the or asthma. Uh, international, I would uh, attribute it to my experience with us in Australia in the beginning during my first 10 years of, uh, of being the lecturer in UPM. Then from there, it goes to JICA. And after that, uh, followed by the SPS. We have a, a 10 years, uh, in fact, ad in addition, uh, total 20 years, two decades of uh, collaborative uh, research or effort with the SBS, I mean UPM as a whole, not only me. Uh, on the, uh, some of the, sorry, the small grant that recently we are working on GCRF funding that been given to Harriet Ward University and one of the researcher representing UPM. This is also international grant. So altogether, to summarize, I got a 61 project to date and 29, which I lead the project and uh, all in uh, bringing me up from the government, UPM fund, private sectors, uh, to estimated about 10 million of uh, research grant. So uh, not that big, uh, but I think it's uh, quite substantial to fund the work that I've been doing all this while. Let's start with the public uh, funded grants. Uh, I will talk as an experience being an applicant and also the panel for UPM. Uh, the three major uh, funding from the government uh, is on FRGS, uh, TRGS and RGS, although PRGS also a part of it. But uh, since I'm not uh, receiving any on PRGS, uh, I recipient of these three, so I'll talk on these three uh, only. Uh, when we talk about FRGS, it's main fundamental, fundamental research grant scheme, and as such is fundamental title. And this has been there uh, to share with uh, all of the young one, uh, especially the young staff. I think the seniors one are, uh, more or less know what to expect when they're writing proposal for FRGS. Uh, for the beginners, uh, FRGS is fundamental uh, 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 type of grant, research grant. So fundamental, that means you have to understand the word fundamental there. So uh, it's not applied. So when you have applied, so when we do the screening, even at UPM levels, we normally ask for change in title because we are not supposed to reject a, a proposal by applicant. We have to uh, uh, improve it. So we will suggest change uh, to the title because if we pass it at the uh, Mohi levels, then uh, the rejection is very high. So as uh, they have already uh, given uh, uh, 
uh, some uh, scope or, or uh, uh, regulation or terms of reference that we must follow when we are writing proposal for the uh, FRDS. So, uh, title is very important. Uh, I put it as, as first uh, issue here. Uh, by the way, if you listen to Dato Is uh, Majid uh, presentation a few days back on the second, I think, he elaborated on the uh, new uh, revised uh, term of FRDS. Please uh, uh, keep uh, log on and uh, play that uh, record of FRDS briefing by Dato Isa. Uh, because there are some changes there, uh, uh, quite uh, major, especially on the national priority area and things like that. So others are more or less still the same. So uh, normally uh, for FRGS, uh, you had to abide to all the technical specifications. So this is to be provided by RMC. You can uh, request for it. And as I say, it's been updated recently for 2021, and it has some major changes to that. So please observe that uh, new uh, spec that been uh, outlined for FRGS. It's a period of two years, two to three years, uh, with a budget of uh, 250,000, I think, for uh, FRGS. So uh, don't go beyond that. Uh, I think uh, at uh, UP Endeavor, we make sure that you don't go beyond that. And uh, we will look closely on that uh, aspect. One important thing that uh, you must remember when you're writing proposal for FRGS is same like the all others, uh, uh, TRGS and RGS2, the uh, statement of problem is, is very important. So problem statement or research uh, problem statement must be clearly be mentioned. And this is uh, normally been given in the executive summary. So, and, and also in the background uh, information. So do uh, spend some time on that parts of uh, executive summary and also in uh, uh, research background or study background to clearly define the problem of uh, research that you want to engage in so that you are clear on the, uh, we are all clear at the uh, uh, panels to, to see that you had the problem statement clearly identified and been put up in a nice uh, a way, uh, well understood by the panels, by the panelists. And normally end up with good objective. So objective has to be, uh, it's not uh, something like a uh, reasonable objective, I would say, for two years grant and the amount of 250 maximum. So some people put uh, five, uh, uh, there are uh, proposals that come in with five, sub, five objective, which is, uh, to me, is a bit uh, overexcited there. And uh, you can only do perhaps two to three, three objective is even fine for FRGS and uh, be particular, be specific, but you are going to achieve at the end of the projects. So clear objective and can be achieved within the project period of two to three years, depend on your choice. Uh, if some project, the nature of the project require more time than you would opt for three years, but uh, under reasonable uh, scenario, normally two years is been given and the budget that been approved also for the period of your, for the duration of your research. Meteorologi satu lagi perkara yang penting, in fact dalam taklimat uh, Dato' Isa uh, dua hari lepas, uh, markah yang agak banyak diperuntukkan untuk bahagian metodologi. So metodologi is very important. Dan metodologi ni kita kena link betul-betul dengan objektif yang kita declare tu. So meaning that when you write your object, uh, your methodology, you go along with your objective. You know, so kalau objective satu is to investigate what and what. So make sure that uh, dalam methodology adalah perkenaan dengan objective pertama. Then objective nombor dua, methodologinya dibahagikan secara demikian, agak systematic 
yang lebih senang untuk kita lihat sama ada metodologinya tu uh, ada logiknya logik dari segi duration uh, dan logik dari segi uh, uh, grant iaitu BI yang dia minta okay. so tadi uh, saya mungkin miss some of the keyword dalam title tu uh, what they are looking for untuk FRGS ni title tu penting saya kata so try to have something like uh, uh, FRGS nature of uh, title for example investigating uh, of so and so of uh, reproductive system of of uh, uh, tenggalan or something uh, puntilleptis bulu that's of the saprinid and then or uh, elucidation of uh, elucidating the process of whatever. so this is clearly showing the fundamental aspect of your research right so back to where we left just now budgets so budget also you never try to go for big budget but it's not commensurate with the objective and the methodology of work that you propose so budget must reflect the methodology and the reality to be achieved and uh, uh, read about the budgets uh, 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 in term of syarat-syarat uh, uh, dia yang diperlukan untuk supaya kita dapat uh, we never go uh, over daripada apa yang diperlukan atau apa, apa yang dibenarkan untuk sesuatu bahagian tersebut so uh, banyak bahagian di situ I think uh, you all aware of that project activities and milestones satu lagi perkara yang dititik beratkan oleh panel dalam proposal tu kerana dia kena clearly been uh, express projectivity lain pada milestone eh? so don't write uh, milestone sebagai projectivity bagi the young one they often sometimes uh, they, they mix between the two milestone is uh, macam uh, uh, satu tanda yang kita akan tengok progress you sepanjang uh, dua tahun perjalanan projek tersebut So that's the way how we uh, monitor dan uh, by monitoring tu dia akan tentukan sama ada projek tu projek yang berjaya atau projek sakit dan sebagainya kalau projek sakit RMC lah dia punya uh, uh, orang yang kena uh, bagi remedy dia and lot of things that we have to do uh, follow rates uh, 250k the maximum depending on your nature of work kalau definitely yang biotech akan require more for the uh, consumable so is allowed as long as you justify it. so dalam bajet kena detail dengan bubuh uh, dia punya kepala dia saja dan the amount so that's not a good practice and follow rate uh, yang yang betul-betul dinyatakan uh, for example i think uh, saya dengar semak dua hari lepas FRGS sekarang ni 2000 kot dia punya rate ya yeah, untuk uh, GRA dan sebagainya untuk master uh, expected result dalam FRGS ni clear kalau kita dengar taklimat uh, uh, Datuk Isa pun sama juga he emphasize on the same thing It's first is on manpower of what we could they call it bakat uh, how many GRA you producing master PhD and uh, your uh, paper publication What the panel would like to see is obviously Q1, Q2. Uh, I know it's not easy uh, for some uh, research uh, area to, to go into Q1, Q2, but it's always good to have a higher target. But at the end, if you get something lower, it's also uh, not that uh, uh, maknanya taklah satu masalah sangat dari segi output yang kita declare and uh, recently they include the transla translational potential characteristic ini makna daripada FGR, FRGS ni untuk tujuan nak dapat PRGS they look into that aspect of uh, translational uh, potential jadi bagi mereka mereka yang ada topik yang mungkin later on nak pergi kepada uh, Uh, commercialization of technology dan sebagainya 
this uh, perkara translational ni perlu dibagi perhatian juga and uh, masa saya apply FRGS I got three FRGS I think to, rin, to throw out my career uh, dia punya uh, uh, spec dia tu tak begitu uh, uh, teliti macam sekarang kerana dulu kita ada sembilan uh, uh, cluster kan tapi sekarang later dah jadi lima belas so kita kena aware of that dan ada SDG lagi dan sebagainya uh, jadi kita kena follow the existing uh, instruction dan uh, uh, make ourselves abide to all those uh, requirement barulah uh, proposal kita dapat berjalan so uh, track records uh, researcher kena lah so uh, nak memohon FRGS ni pun dia tengok juga kalau you dah biasa publish is a bonus uh, kalau you tak pernah publish langsung tak akanlah tak adalah sometimes uh, you got your PhD you got your master mesti ada publication dan infographic lately is essential uh, ini some of the tips juga yang saya nak share yang uh, attract the uh, panelists uh, to to help with the approval uh, collaboration Uh, in a way, FRGS sebab bajet dia agak sikit saja. So be careful with collaboration juga kalau nak bubu on uh, sebagai mentor untuk writing with your ex-supervisor, PhD dan sebagainya. Boleh masukkan dalam uh, migran tu dan uh, digalakkan juga. Tapi kalau tak ada pun, uh, tak affect you punya chance. Okay? Those are the things that I presume that uh, that could be of a little uh, 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 upgrade, uh, apa? Uh, update to what you already have uh, uh, understood all this while when you were applying for uh, FRGS. Uh, I got my FRGS for uh, for uh, sorry, uh, Temole and uh, I tak ingat dah dua lagi, sorry time macam ni tapi on the fish eh, kebanyakannya as for TRGS is a trans uh, disciplinary research that mean that uh, one uh, few sub project made up to the one program and uh, all sub project are equally important uh, one is supporting one another and at the end is uh, gearing toward uh, achieving the common goal so uh, apart from uh, the requirement of TRGS that you can read or have in front of you when you are writing your proposal others that perhaps that need to be highlighted and need to be looked into is uh, the project that you propose should be of the new uh, research area i mean the new research title is a novel novel research area and not repeated uh, of other works uh, by As, uh, overlapping or something like that but say it's a new and is a contribution uh, to the country uh, if possible and the problem statement is again of uh, equal importance same FRGS national priorities area this is uh, going to be uh, I think very soon it's going to be applicable to TRGS uh, and LRG as well it's only for FRGS for the beginning And connectivity between subprojects, uh, this has to be in form of infographics during our times uh, that may this not really been emphasized. But now they're looking into it as one of the, uh, when the panelist is grading the giving point uh, to the proposal, they're looking into this connectivity aspect. So as I said, all subprojects are equally important and supporting one another uh, like we did for Sarawak Terobo uh, we have on the uh, breeding and laboratory we have on the population dynamic uh, we have on economic uh, aspect uh, as well so uh, your team is possible uh, should have a combination of, uh, of established researcher the seniors as well as the young one Uh, for each sub project so do include the young one as well but this is capacity building in a way uh, to the uh, department or faculty 
A collaborative effort with government agency uh, is encouraged. Uh, uh, for example, uh, when we did our Trubuk Sarawak, we engaged UNIMAS and we engaged uh, Bahagian Perikanan Darat uh, Sarawak to work with us. So this is uh, uh, even adding the value. I guess uh, at that time, uh, our proposal have all these uh, attributes that is uh, 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 quite uh, uh, meeting the uh, requirement of the uh, TRGS scheme. Research outputs, uh, as, uh, as we know that FRGS is better funding, uh, better funded than uh, FRGS, than uh, LRGS, uh, uh, the research output in terms of manpower and publication also has to be uh, commensurate to that uh, amount. I have to hurry up because I'm a bit uh, behind. For LRGS, uh, well, it, this is uh, an upgrade of TRGS. Uh, we have TRGS and we apply LRGS. So that experience helped us with this, with the uh, approval of uh, LRGS, alhamdulillah. So, but uh, LRGS is a long-term research grant scheme, actually. Uh, it means that uh, whatever you're uh, thinking of for your project in LRGS has to be a research that is of the long-term uh, uh, approach and also well connected with government existing policies. They look that very uh, in, in close uh, examination with the government existing policy, for example, on the food security, renewable energy, and everything like that. So, uh, so strong impact to the development of the country is a must uh, for LRGS. And we address that in Patimbua because Patimbua population has been on the downward trend in Sungapaha. Element of uh, LRGS should be present. Or element there is long-term project, and uh, uh, of course it has to be justified. But the LRGS uh, input or, or uh, entities had to be embedded there in the in the proposal. This is to justify the LRGS project. It's not the RGS. So there is a difference between the two. Bigger funding and also the number of years between three to five years. We got ours for three. I didn't, when I presented it in, one, uh, in Mohi, uh, they not convinced uh, to allow us for uh, five years. I guess this is due to the, uh, partly to the uh, uh, economic situation. And also they want to give more LRGS to universities and uh, uh, we take the challenge, we, we're going for three years. Uh, the social economic component, again, as, uh, as applicable to uh, TRGS, is also need to be included in LRGS. It's a must, actually, because uh, this is uh, one of the criteria that have been outlined by the MOHI. Teams that are all uh, uh, gathered by the uh, program leader must uh, show good track record, especially the leader uh, uh, himself or herself, and also the sub-project leaders try to choose one with good track record. The researcher can be uh, of various background or different academic achievement, but the program leader, sub-project uh, leader has to be of a good stature uh, in terms of uh, good track record uh, in getting grant and also in publication. So as in that, uh, does uh, have an uh, does have a bearing here. So and in LRGS you had to work with other university. So select your university partners well, uh, based on your knowledge of what they have, uh, what kind of expertise they have. Uh, what we are looking for is supporting expertise, not competing against us. So against uh, the main uh, uh, institution. They are supporting, but they were given uh, the money equally as uh, the money goes to their university. In case of our party boy, it goes to UMT and also to UKM. Uh, 
program leader has a good traits of presenting proposal and convincing. Uh, this is not really an issue, but uh, sometimes you have to have some kind of attribute when you are presenting your proposal to the to the panels. They look at that. You must be real convincing and able to uh, gain their uh, trust that you are presenting something that is of uh, this the level of uh, LRGS. Uh, I'm sure that uh, the one who get it, uh, all those who pass with flying colors. Uh, track record with uh, earlier work is, is also beneficial. If you have some work in LRGS completed and good output, TRGS completed with good output, then you can go about with it. Budget allocation has to be competitive, although people tend to put uh, quite a big uh, sum for LRGS, but lately uh, they kept it a bit down because of the, uh, uh, the, the size of fund that they have. Expected output, gain, same uh, bucket and also publication, but it's commensurate to the LRGS Grenadier funding their budgeter, so it has to be uh, Seventy percent, sixty or seventy percent. I, I have to note that you now is of Q one, Q two, uh, that we had to pledge for it uh, in the beginning, and they had to work it throughout the projects. Uh, lately, risk management is something that you may want to address also because actually, dalam MCO ni, dah setahun nak kita dalam MCO. Setahun juga uh, LRGS saya dah been delayed so we cannot go out uh, for monthly sampling as such that uh, it creates something of uh, uh, the many uncertainties, uh, so many comments given during the progress uh, presentation at, at, at MOHI. So risk management is, uh, is important. So that sum up with a, a national grant. And national grant is also applicable for UPM funds. When you ask him for funding from UPM, uh, UPM got some money uh, from research uh, budget, uh, research university budget, and they have been delivered to researcher in the form of IPM, IPB, uh, 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 good track record. A researcher can have one of their own and things like that. So they are all abide to this. Uh, component as well. And uh, on the other hand, I has uh, uh, some uh, managed to get some funding. It's small fund with the Department of Fisheries because the uh, Department of Fisheries uh, was looking into the seed production of these uh, uh, crabs. Uh, and uh, coincidentally, I was lo doing research on it. Uh, and uh, we received 50,000 uh, from uh, Department of Fisheries on the seed production of uh, blue swimming crab. So this is the work that I did, and this is the one that we uh, provide, or we supply then to the FRI in Glampata. Uh, they are doing research on the culture of it. Hopefully, uh, it will at the end, I would like to see that this become uh, a good, uh, good aquaculture uh, species uh, because is uh, crab are more hardy than shrimp, uh, less uh, problem with disease at the moment, and uh, it give a good uh, a price actually uh, is higher than the shrimp, definitely higher, higher than venomy. Uh, a kilo of crab will cost about fifty ringgit now, as opposed to uh, venomy about twenty five to thirty. And uh, we got a good uh, account or uh, acknowledgement from the Department of Fisheries uh, of uh, the project. Uh, tried, uh, we had some trial in Kedah and be successful. I just want to mention a bit on the international collaboration project and funding that I have and UPN have uh, as uh, me as one of the researcher, mainly with the uh, JSPS, Japan Society for Promotion of Science. And this has been going on uh, for a long period, I said, nearly two decades. With the first decade, 
uh, of 10 years uh, been the, the one that is most interesting for me because that's how we uh, collaborate, we work together with uh, all ASEAN participating countries and uh, we got money from Malaysian government in terms of matching fund, but in terms of uh, organizing conference, attending conference, capacity building for young researchers, it's all been taken care by JSPS. So this is a, a good thing that perhaps we should uh, continue. I question look into this. Don't uh, 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 never take your eyes on this because there's still new development on JSPS in future. It's only been stopped for a while because of MCO and also COVID. So mainly uh, on uh, core to core that start in 2012 uh, until now, uh, mainly collaboration with University of Tokyo, specifically with Auri in uh, uh in uh, uh but uh quite far from uh, tokyo itself and uh is this collaboration between you see tokyo and asean countries asean is not including singapore it's only malaysia thailand vietnam philippines and indonesia so those are the participating countries on behalf of asean uh, we stay together for two decades already is kept, of course, changing our guts. The, the one uh, that uh, uh, retired will be replaced by a new one. Uh, the funding uh, agency come from each ASEAN countries. Uh, we come, our funding come from Mohi for the implementation of the project. But JS project, uh, JSP will provide, uh, as I said, funding for travel, for capacity building of the young one, and also for the uh, attending our conference and organizing our workshop. So in UPM, uh, I, together with others, I know USM, uh, Dato Eileen, and uh, um, even Dr. Mahdi and Sasa involved in this uh, GSPS, and uh, me, Prof. Fatima, Prof. Japa, Prof. Mutahara, and uh, Shazwan, Dr. Shazwan, the Fedals as well. So we are all in a big team of uh, UPM uh, in this uh, JSPS. So uh, the first 10 years was uh, more on the cost of living resources, uh, but the second phase uh, started with Prof. Atima as the uh, national uh, coordinator for Malaysia. Uh, he carried out for a period of six years then uh, pass over to me uh, for three years. But when it passed over to me, uh, we don't get funding from Mohi because of technical problem. And uh, we run short of everything. We only collaborate through the uh, JSPS uh, kind find, uh, funding from their, from their coffer. And uh, the present one is uh, headed by UMT, by Promazalan. Uh, also not uh, moving because of uh, Japan stop it. Uh, all ASEAN countries are not uh, opening their border and this is not moving, but it's still a good program. What I try to emphasize is good program for us to stay in. We met, uh, we use IACOS even uh, as one of the place for the workshop. And we're doing work on plankton, we do a harmful agar bloom on fish diversity, on bentos, and, and also on seagrass and seaweed. And uh, on top of the international uh, collaboration, uh, me and a uh, few others, like, uh, especially Dr. Lina, we have been trying to get uh, China as our uh, international uh, collaborators, uh, we're not that uh, successful yet. Uh, now further with uh, uh, COVID, but uh, our project is uh, we are looking into uh, shellfish uh, research with uh, China and also try to uh, cater for their interest in uh, Malaysian aquaculture. So uh, my uh, share of uh, point with or uh, through this JSPS project 
is uh, one we are committed with the S project. We have a good track record of researchers, which we do in UPM, uh, especially in marine science. And educate lab facilities, this also we have uh, enough for us to be the partners. And uh, the liaison with international partners or internalization is uh, been uh, uh, executed or been played over by uh, senior uh, researcher like Prof. Fatima had been very uh, uh, important figures that make this uh, uh, international program uh, successful for Malaysia. Uh, joined through this program, we had joint publication, training workshop, conferences. Uh, we have uh, benefited through capacity building and networking with the regional scientists in ASEAN countries as well. So here, I see there is some strategic partnership effort that should be uh, applicable for international project. So we had to keep the contact going. We had to plan uh, something that work in the future as well. And uh, apart from site, uh, uh, successful implementation of GSPS is our, uh, uh, our uh, Satrack Cosmos which uh, we managed to get with JICA with a special uh, substantial funding to where Prof. Fatima is the program leader collaborating with uh, UMT and UNICEF. On the private sector, uh, of course, uh, strategy financial is fully applicable. Uh, we want to establish a good partnership with uh, our counterpart there in, in the private sector. Uh, this is for the mutual benefit. They benefit from us through our expertise, and we manage to uh, uh, give them the output that is needed for their uh, uh, for their activities of, of the company. So here is uh, uh, this uh, mutual partnership is very important, and Natra will perhaps. Uh, uh, Dr. Natra will perhaps elaborate more on the international funding. So this one, we had to take it to our advantage as well. We got from Forest City, uh, Dr. Mutahara, uh, Prof. Mutahara and Prof. Japa are my, uh, me and Dr. Lina are the main players for uh, the uh, research, private research funding with Forest City with a grant of 2.5 million for five years. And uh, we write a good uh, convincing proposal and uh, we are looking forward for sorry the work is on the invertebrates because forestry is undergoing reclamation uh, the, as such the seagrass uh, uh, ecosystem have been threatened and we've been asked to monitor the uh, fauna and flora of the seagrass bed so we did that for five years ended uh, 2020 february uh, uh, we may uh, apply for, uh, we are in the process, I think, try to compete with others for the uh, second phase of it. Uh, the seagrass work by Pramutara. And uh, here, in point of private sector and industrial engagements, uh, I would see that uh, we have to closely, they, they do, sometimes they don't come to us, then we have to really go about and uh, make the contact with them. And uh, this is through uh, conferences or meeting that we have uh, with them in, in, in different, different uh, places. So we have to make the first move. And uh, in our case, we make our first move through contact that we got uh, from the inside. So uh, they are normally looking for the expertise. Uh, a company would want to spend their R&D uh, in, in a big uh, way. So they're looking into getting the expertise from the university and together with their, uh, uh, their activities or their project that they are getting from their clients and work together and try to uh, come up with a good uh, contract research project. Ours is contract research, it's not consultancy. Uh, for their forest city, uh, which uh, we don't gain much in terms of uh, financial reward, but we get uh, 
to produce quite a good number of uh, uh, research students, which is Bakat, and uh, there's some publication too. Uh, effective project management is one of the essential things that must be included uh, in the projects that been uh, 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 stressed on, on, on both sides. Uh, this is to be uh, uh, discussed over by the two parties. Research output is uh, meeting the client expectation. Of course, they are looking for value for money, uh, apart from consultancy, because consultancy, they have to spend more. But giving the uh, contract research is, uh, uh, is uh, value for money for them. But uh, we had to take it also uh, uh, value for money for us on the way. Capacity building, as I said, through GRA, and uh, and these students have the chance to work with uh, uh, industry, understand about industrial uh, activities, uh, especially related to environment. Uh, we did get five uh, years of uh, funding, and uh, it's good uh, term for us. Uh, uh, Projapa, Pramutara, and the Trina did well uh, under the projects. Uh, as I was more, uh, uh, I have uh, less time with them because I was doing the directorship of a course at that time. So through this uh, engagement with industry too, uh, lately there is uh, one uh, scheme of research uh, funding, what they call it, Raju project. Uh, this is Dr. through Dr. Fazil of uh, Ecoculture Department. He got a, a research project for Kla under Traju for two million something. It's two million, eh? uh, correct me if I'm wrong. And, and and this is also a very important project for the young lecturers to be uh, thinking about of coming up with proposal with Traju. The father is also a senior lecturer. It's, uh, it's just been exposed, I mean, about 10 years of exposure. But uh, still, uh, the Traju uh, is quite uh, impressive with the proposal that he wrote. And uh, it goes for all others in the uh, entities as well. So that's all, uh, Dr. Fikri. Uh, I'm afraid that... Uh, I've taken a bit uh, long time to uh, present uh, my share of experience uh, together with other uh, info as well. And I hope it's of uh, something of uh, new if, uh, to the young uh, lecturers uh, or to those who are uh, thinking of applying grant and things like that. So over to you, Dr. Fikri, maybe to the Dr. Natra, direct word. Okay. Thank you very much, Prof. Aziz, for a very excellent presentation, excellent sharing session, right? So, Prof. Aziz explained something about national grant, about government agency grant, international grant, and private sector grant. So, basically, there are a lot of grant uh, out there. So, up to us to uh, find which one is related, okay, to us. Right, uh, and then uh, as I'm said at the beginning of the session, so we will uh, have a question and, and answer after Prof. Nat, uh, Prof. Uh, Dr. Associate Professor Dr. Natra finishes uh, her presentation. So let me introduce Associate Professor Dr. Natra. Here yeah, she is uh, an Associate Professor in the Department of Aquaculture, Faculty of Agriculture, University of Putra Malaysia. She also as an uh, associate researcher in Laboratory of Marine Biology, Institute of Bioscience, UPM, and also an interim member of the Laboratory of Sustainable Aquaculture, IAQUAS. She is currently Deputy Dean of Graduate Studies, Research and Internalization, Faculty of Agriculture, UPM, and Treasurer, treasurer for World Aquaculture Society, uh, Asian Pacific Chapter. Dr. Natra is specialized on aquatic microbial uh, ecology, right? Okay, so in terms of the publications, she is the author and co-author of various research articles in international peer review paper, 
So about 40 general papers and 20 of it is in Q1 and Q2. With a Google Scholar H index of 15 with 986 citation, Scopus index 10 with 587 citation, a book. She also a reviewer in several international and national journal, including Q1, Q2 journal. Okay, so she received two international grants as a PI, Principal Investigator, funded by International Development Research Center Canada and Global AMR Innovation Fund, GAMRIF, United Kingdom, worth 4.2 million ringgit Malaysia, right? On integrated quorum quenching strategies to reduce antimicrobial uh, resistance in shrimp aquaculture, right? So she also received a second project, uh, a community <laughs> grant, which is in collaboration with different Asia Europe universities, for example, with Belgium, Thailand, Philippines, New Zealand, Australia, and China. So she always she is uh, or was the project leader or other research grant amounting about six hundred forty five million uh, ringgit Malaysia thousand ringgit Malaysia from private and government bodies, include uh, including Ministry of Higher Education grant right, uh, Mosti grant and other grant which is I think she will explain more on that right. So the floor is over to you, uh, as I said, Professor Dr Natra. Uh, no sound. So please turn on your mic. Uh, okay. All right. So okay. I'm, I'm on now. Uh, okay, let me read on the slide show. Thank you, Dr. Fitri, uh, for the introduction. Hello and good morning, everyone. Um, okay, so first, when I heard that I were to give a talk, you know, with uh, Prof. Aziz, I feel very small, actually, because, you know, my experience is not as experienced as him, but somehow I will try my best um, to share with you. Uh, so it's like more, you know, uh, like storytelling of my my experience, you know, uh, uh, in terms of being a researcher and also academician, um, you know, uh, from start until um, until now. Okay, uh, I'm actually I don't consider myself young any, anymore. I'm basically in the middle. Okay, so uh, that's why for today uh, it's basically. Uh, more on um, sharing on the first step as me from as a young researcher until uh, at my um, the step I'm in now, which is our is a, like a middle 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 stage researcher. Okay, and as what uh, you know, um, uh, being told by the organizer, uh, organizer, uh, the talk today would focus uh, for my talk today I will focus on three things okay the first one is more on the strategic partnership okay particularly in international ground -wide, uh, writing uh, which is for research and also for the community okay and I'm going to share and focus uh, on my experience when uh, writing okay also together with my team uh, on these two grant okay the first one are uh, basically on the use of um, you know, different integration of quarantine quenching strategies uh, to reduce antimicrobial resistance in shrimp culture. These are also uh, in collaboration with different universities, uh, national, in national, at national level and also international level. And also, uh, and the first grant is basically uh, a research grant. While the second one is uh, is a community grant. It's, it's, it's somewhat um in between okay community and research grant uh, which focus more on sustainable aquatic resource management in mangrove ecosystem via internet of things or iot okay and these are also in collaboration with uh, different universities uh, at national and also international level all right so basically uh 
you know what I hope uh, you know uh, the thing that I hope um, participant would uh, get from my talk is this uh, at, at least uh, these five take home messages where um, uh, all started with uh, you know by maintaining good relationship with your mentors seniors and super superiors and it's also important to build a CV be active okay uh, start small first okay start the national grant and remember when you're writing a proposal uh, make sure that you are really writing the proposal according to the funders need where uh, Prof. Aziz also touched about that just now and at the end you know after you try your best okay uh, make sure you ne never give up and let let God do the rest Oops. all right okay um i must say um i really owe a lot um you know uh, if there's anything good uh, in terms of my achievement now uh, uh, you know up to today is uh, i really owe it to my uh, to all my mentors seniors and also superiors because they are the ones who really showed me the way um in terms of you know how to be uh, an academician and also uh, a good researcher uh, and for that i'm really thankful uh, to all my mentors during my uh, studies uh, from undergrads uh, to graduate studies and also um, my bosses uh, my seniors in my department and also uh, all the uh, you know leaders, uh, uh, my bosses um, in the faculty uh, upm and also uh, different places uh, around the world so I, I really so everything starts here. So they are actually the one who led who led uh, the way in terms of um, you know at least guiding me. Um, you know, oh, what are the starting point? Okay, uh, yeah, to 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 in order to become a good researcher. Then uh, that is why, okay, uh, and from them also, okay, I learned how to build my CV. I, I learned from them a lot, okay, where as an academician, it's important to basically uh, somehow um, make sure, okay, uh, all the components, you, you, you are, you are, everything is in balance, okay, you, are, you have to be good in teaching and also uh, in research. But what, what is actually nice about being a academician is actually you are able to teach, you know, uh, according to the research that you're doing. So uh, the knowledge that you are sharing is always up to date. Okay. And then it's also important to always stick to your niche. All right. Uh, so um, I was trained, uh, actually, my first training is biologist. And then, and then uh, during my master's, I did a lot of uh, of work with microalgae and then yeah, during my phd uh, i did more work uh, on on the microbes so so especially quorum sensing and quorum quenching so i'm sticking with that okay i'm uh, working a lot with microbes looking at the interaction uh, between the microbes and also the host and also looking for solutions okay and it's also important okay when you are trying to build a cv okay uh, try also to strive uh, in, when publishing, try to strive for uh, to publish in a good journal, all right, uh, which are related to your field. Okay, uh, um, if possible, always target Q1 and Q2, Q2 papers. Okay, and I, I know it's also now it's, it's somewhat um, compulsory lah by RMC, which I think is, is a good move. Okay, and also when presenting, um, you know, in a conference or you know, uh, in, in anything, okay, in a seminar, um, always try also to go for oral presentation because it's, it's, it's when you are presenting orally, um, somehow um, from there people, uh, it's, it's easier for, uh, you know, for you to introduce yourself to people, okay, because you're speaking and then uh, people can also get to know you better, right? And it's also good uh, to try your luck with uh, awards okay there are quite uh, several awards out there okay uh and mostly it's uh for people uh who are below than 40 i'm not eligible anymore so uh when if you are below than 40 please try at least with one award all right 
okay and from there uh, somehow uh, it is somehow it will somehow help in terms of building a cv and um, later the funder would also somehow see that as a good track record um, you know of your research journey okay and um i i find it to be also important to be you know uh, it's important to be active uh, with the society also, uh, this also with, with the help of the mentors uh, are the one who brought me uh, into the society where I started uh, holding um, you know different posts uh, from treasurer and then uh, at the end vice president for Malaysia Fish Society and now I'm currently the treasurer of World Aquaculture Society for Asian Pacific chapter. The good thing of uh, evolving with this different relevant, relevant remember relevant society is that it somehow expose you to other people who are also relevant to you, uh, not only at academic scale, but also at the industrial scale and also at the community scale. Right. And when you are in, you are you are basically involved in a society, um, volunteer volunteer to you know organize event and um, that's why um, you know if you can see uh, my schedule is always organizing webinar because it's, it has become my my passion now uh, in terms of organizing because I feel that is already my responsibility to share my knowledge uh, to people. Right. And then it's also important, okay, the third one is to fish where the fish are. It means that it's also important for you to mingle people with, with the relevant skill uh, with you, okay, and to get them to know you. Uh, and then, of course, when you want people to appreciate you, you somehow to, you have to be someone first, all right? And then I'm also um, I'm, I'm I'm also grateful, okay, that I have also the opportunity in two thousand in two thousand eighteen or two thousand nineteen, two thousand nineteen if I'm not mistaken, okay, uh, there is a program uh, by um, the Ministry of Higher Education, so they have this program known as SEO at Faculty Program, and this is basically for lecturers uh, below than forty to be engaged uh, with industry, okay? All right. And then um, somehow, you know, uh, at first, my, my first choice is actually uh, something related to me, lah, of course. Um, uh, I'm, I am looking at Kazana, uh, where I know that at that time, the shrimp, shrimp farm, the Akitago is somehow attached to them. And then I'm also looking at same derby but somehow my rezeki uh, goes to Ericsson. Uh -huh. uh, the truth is when I heard about Ericsson, I was so scared because uh, I know nothing about technology. Um, I, I'm, I'm basically uh, even when I need something you know with my PowerPoint or anything I always get help from people. Okay, but somehow there is actually a blessing in disguise, uh, which I will tell you later. All right. Okay, so um, try try your best to connect uh, both with the industry and also the society, and strive to come up with something that will be beneficial to both of them. Okay, either you organize a symposium, uh, you know, with them, and also uh, or try to find solution. Uh, towards the problem that they are having. Okay. All right, so everything, you know, uh, when I first came back uh, from Gan University, so I did my PhD in Gan University, Belgium, under the solution of Patrick Sargulas, Peter Bosir, and Tom DeFort, um, where I, uh, my special, uh, where I specialize on quorum sensing, quorum quenching, and looking at the microalgae better interaction as a disease control. Uh, and then when uh, I came back, uh, so it's like, you know, it's, uh, it's basically, you know, it's, it's okay, um, it's well, okay, uh, that time I was quite, I don't know, downfounded, how to say it, uh, which I'm tak tahu mana nak start, but I'm lucky I have my mentors, so all, all my seniors and bosses, so uh, they, they somehow walk me through the steps okay but i started uh trying uh you know uh, the national grant first uh, where the first grant that i applied is actually the yayasan Pak Rashid, all right 
uh, this grant is actually a small grant, but somehow um, it's quite uh, well known at that time lah. Uh, it's not that easy also to get. It's just ten thousand, but I don't know uh, why it's quite stringent in terms of me. But it's actually a good le learning opportunity for me. All right. And from there, uh, okay, uh, I also tried another uh, national grant and Alhamdulillah at that time it's quite easy to get grants. So I have, I, have um, I, I got FRG Science Fund. But, and, um, and at the same time, uh, I was also involved with GSPS thanks to uh, Prof. Aziz, uh, Prof. Uh, Prof. Prof uh, Fatima, uh, Prof Muta, Prof Japa uh, for bringing me to the project. So from there also I start to learn uh, step by step on you know, how to somehow evolve with uh, international project. Okay, and at the same time, um, you know, uh, at this stage uh, I have also, you know, I feel the responsibility also to somehow uh, contribute back uh, to the student, to the community. So I also encourage uh, my other students to apply grant and also So I have here uh, my patient student who are, who receive a, uh, a grant, okay. Uh, it's actually a Commonwealth, Commonwealth Website Page Scholarship, right, with the Swans University. And from there also somehow uh, the collaboration between the different um, international collaborators started, okay. And we also uh, co-written to, uh, together a grant, okay, uh, on Malaysia Tourist Science Foundation grant, okay. So I encourage my student to, uh, to, to basically present orally, right, and some of them receive uh, my award for them, right. And actually, uh, you know, opportunities of um, uh, applying grant and also um, in terms of you know winning an award doesn't really um it doesn't really stop only for graduate students and also for researchers like us but it also it is also it's available for uh, undergrads uh example are this Kin Starfish Foundation, where they offer small, uh, like kickstart grant uh, for undergrads to somehow uh, have project with the community. All right, and I think uh, I actually, um, you know, uh, asked some of my some of my undergrads to apply for this, and they they pass up to, up to the interview stage, and I think it's it's a very good experience for them too. All right. All right, so looking back on basically tips and tricks on international grant writing. Okay, so uh, I'll, I'll bring you back to these two grants. Okay, so these are basically the important things when you, you want to write uh, for, for, for an international grant. Okay, first of all is you really have to understand the guideline uh, and what are the grant the international grant is about so, so here we have uh, some guidelines on the RDR series grant and also uh, the Asia Connect project. So this one is the research grant and this is the community grant. Okay. So first, you really have to read and study their website. Okay, from there, uh, try to find the keyword. Okay, um, uh, keyword on what the aim of the grant, okay, what, what are actually the aim of the funder and also what actually they need, okay. Saya macam dengar bunyi ayam. Tak tolong organizer, bikin, okay, thank you. Alright, okay. And then when you really follow, okay, their objective and understand uh, what they really want, okay, you can start write your proposal and this it is also important okay to make sure that that you are following the guideline really strictly okay it it, it happens to me that uh, there is one one international grant that i i applied with my uh with Sansi colleague we have everything ready but our our application was rejected be, it's just because we uh, our pro project problem and justification exceeded like 10 or 5 words. Uh, 
So they uh, somehow they just screen it like that. Okay, so make sure that you are really following the guidelines strictly. Uh, and then another tips on um, writing international grant is uh, look for its hidden keyword. Okay, uh, this is an example of grant on um, the first research grant where uh, you can see it from the website. Okay, there's this keyword on where the funded aim to basically reduce antimicrobial resistance and looking for um, innovation or products that somehow would benefit the low and middle income countries. And they're also looking at things that can be commercialized and can be adopted. And they, are also, they also want to see the partnership. Um, okay, so uh, highlight that in your proposal. Uh, meanwhile, this is for the other grant. This is the community grant. Okay. Uh, here you can see that, okay, uh, most of the funder, they would highlight their objective. So look at their objective and try to somehow cater what they want in your proposal. So in the case of the second grant, okay, funded by this Asia at Connect, they want to somehow increase internet connectivity for research and education between Asia and Europe. Okay, so that is why, actually I wrote this grant well when I was in Ericsson, this somehow, um, you know, I, I actually wrote the two grants when I was in Ericsson. <laughs> Okay, when I was attached with Ericsson, um, that's why I think it's good to somehow um, to get out a little bit from the university punya apa, environment so you can have new perspective, new, new apa, so somehow, uh, you know, uh, dia macam, macam nak cakap, dia, uh, dia membantu kita melihat dari sudut lain lah, alright. So that is uh, so. In, since Ericsson is more on connectivity, and then it's about technology. Okay, so uh, I was aiming for this grant actually uh, because I know uh, somehow uh, Ericsson would be willing to be one of the collaborator. So I have already one collaborator with me. Okay, and then I was looking at this grant, and there are a lot of work packages. Uh, most of it are not relevant to me at all. Uh, uh, until I saw this one, okay, this is actually the work package five where they want to see increase of internet connectivity uh, between, um, you know, research and education uh, institution in Asia and Europe, okay. And at the same time, it has to support the SDGs and it is somehow, uh, it should provide, okay, um, like a gateway for global research and education collaboration. All right, so and then uh, it's also important, okay, uh, this is also again uh, the second grant uh, on the community part. Uh, some funders, they also have a basically, you know, uh, macam dia letak lah information, information on the funded proposal. So from there also you can have some idea on what kind of, you know, title or at least uh, what kind of budget that are reasonable, um, you know, that you can ask for. Okay, kadang-kadang mereka sengaja letak tinggi tapi sebenarnya uh, bila kita letak kita punya budget, uh, you know, terlampau tinggi pun dia sebenarnya akan affect our proposal application. And again, the, uh, this is also, okay, from here also, uh, second uh, grant also uh, highlighted that there's, in, there's the need of this collaboration between different institutions. So that is why I make sure when I'm writing the proposal, I have all sorts of collaborators from different institutions. Okay, so that is about guideline, okay, understanding what are the funders need. Then the second one is to basically, uh, before writing itself, to have a like, big picture, the overall idea, on what actually you want, you want to somehow show to the funder, all right? Uh, so have the bigger picture and slowly, you know, slowly and surely uh, start to join the small pictures together. Okay, think what you can, what you can deliver to the funder uh, in terms of the impact and also outcome. Uh, just like, um, you know, applying the national grant, a title must be very concise. 
uh, make sure that you show all um, you know, your objectives are being shown clearly and are aligned with the funders need and it's also important not to be too ambitious okay uh, make sure you it, it is all within your capability also lah. okay so these are basically an uh, example of the bigger picture like in general uh, because when i'm writing this i have already uh, in my in my mind and also of, uh, with the help of my collaborators uh, that we are going to involve uh, a number of uh, institutions uh, uh, you know working together with this grant and uh, uh, and most of the uh, this institution are actually uh, my friends that I met during the conference and also my friends who accepted my student uh, to go for mobility everything starts there okay so that is very important okay to have this strategic partnership okay and i also envision already uh, the impact and outcomes okay so basically these are the things that are being highlighted in the grant so this uh, this also is similar to the second grant okay where i have this wish um, basically we have this vision to basically um, you know uh provide awareness uh, on uh, mangrove ecosystem via technology which is IOT and because the funder wants to see collaboration between Asia and Europe University, so we make sure that there are uh, universities from different countries and these are basically as per the outcome that are basically catering the needs of the funder. Then the third one, okay, objective must reflect the funder's need, of course. Uh, so that is why uh, when writing uh, the objective, make sure that uh all the objective first it has to be somehow um, connected con connected to each other and it has to somehow you know uh really you know looking at what the funders need so in in the in my case the first grant is about antimicrobial antimicrobial resistant mr so i make sure the work is there and I'm, we are providing these quarantine quenching strategies to basically reduce MR. And I also include, uh, there's one socioeconomics uh, expert, uh, just, to, uh, just to somehow uh, look whether uh, our products that we are going to uh, put out is somehow relevant uh, to, the, to the community. And then uh, the second grant, uh, okay, uh, I make sure that the title is concise, it covers everything. Um, in the grant itself, highlight uh, that this project are basically uh, relevant and also it's, uh, it's basically in, in relationship with different projects. So please, uh, it's very important to highlight that. Uh, so this is also an objective. So this is for the second grant. Uh, again, um, it's important to highlight one by one what is the project all about and how does it really caters uh, the funders, funders need. And at the same time, you can also highlight what are basically uh, the things that uh, that you would deliver, okay, you and your team would deliver. Oops, okay. Then the last one is to put the budget smartly. All right. So these are basically the budget that um, I basically asked. Okay, we have basically asked from the funder, where uh, for the first grant we asked for four point two million uh, ringgit Malaysia, and we got it. But it's just that um, the the thing that you need to consider when preparing this budget is um, always consider, especially when you are applying these big big grants, uh, make sure you have some allocation for coordinator and also postdoc. All right, because it's also important to have these people to help you lah in terms of management, in terms of other other than your collaborators. Okay, so allocate some money for coordinating and postdoc. Okay, and also make sure because um, uh, it's important to have uh, to basically pay your your future student. So make sure you have enough money also uh, for your research assistant, graduate student. Uh, it's important to have also money for research assistant because um, you know because sometimes graduate start students they take time um, to finish your thesis uh, right but research assistant they can be like extra helping hand so it's good to have money 
for research assistant too. And this is also the time uh, for you to buy some equipment because um, uh, I noticed that um, most of the national grant, especially like FRJS, Sunpine, is really hard to buy equipment. But international grant is uh, indeed the place for you to buy equipment. Okay, even for this grant, I we receive around one million just for equipment. Uh, similar to uh, this uh, Meta project, this is the second grant. Uh, again, I, I located a lot uh, on the human resource because um, uh, we have this planning to have a lot of you know, like community awareness event. But I don't know uh, because we are having this uh, pandemic now. So, but we are still planning. Okay, but you can see here most of the budget goes here and also uh, for travel okay it's just that uh, initially our plan is to bring the collaborators to come to malaysia and somehow uh, you know organize even together for the community okay uh, we have some allocation also for equipment and also other courses all right and uh, when selecting your teams, okay, uh, it's important also to select people who are who can work with you, of course, and make sure it ha um, normally for international grant they are looking also, you know, um, you know, in terms of different discipline, okay, people from different discipline working together, and also uh, from different universities. So make sure when you are uh, selecting your team, also you you uh, you basically select them according to the theme of your grant and highlight them okay and also it's also of course it's important to choose for teammates who are sincere and a team player and have this win-win spirit and okay um and just to tell you the story of this uh uh second grant with mangrove okay since my background is uh, i i don't really work with mangrove okay and I'm, I'm not a technology people so and, but i know somehow uh, edison edison they have this csr project with mangrove so i know that i have to find collaborators who, who are experienced in mangrove so and i know that the grant they want to see collaboration between different universities so i, I just tried my luck in contacting future collaborators so what I did uh, in 2018, okay, you can see here uh, the date, uh, I just randomly email um, collaborators, um, you know, uh, where I found their name in the mangrove book. Okay, so they are basically uh, and the authors of this uh, one mangrove book. And I start emailing one by one, uh, explaining on my intention, uh, you know, that I'm going to uh, write this proposal with this specific objective and uh, I'm asking whether they would like to become my collaborators. And the next day, so I wrote it uh, around, I think, 12 in the midnight, okay, when my, my son is asleep, or asleep. So, and the next day at 6 in the morning, I received all of the, all, all of these potential collaborators who, who I wrote to basically reply to my email so that's why uh, I, I just want to say just try your luck okay uh, of course you have to have to be someone first also lah. i mean you have to build a cv so people somehow would uh, would, would, would somehow agree lah to collaborate with you but uh, it's good to try your luck in terms of collaborating future partners okay and it's also important when you're writing your grant uh, to highlight your team, okay, that is actually a, uh, you are basically uh, putting uh, different various expertise in your grant and then you can also highlight as well balance, okay. And in terms of uh, it's, it's good to, to basically highlight your seniors, okay, and uh, show to them that it's actually a team, it's, it's like a super team, okay, uh, with different expertise and at different level uh, okay um, these are the things all, that i also did okay for the second grant where i highlighted that in the project that we are having all these main of experts okay from different universities and not only that we have all the ecologists okay uh, so highlight them okay in your proposal Okay, that is about when you are writing uh, the proposal. But then when when you got the grant and you start to execute 
the grant is a different story, okay? Uh, but it's important, okay, uh, to stick with the vision and mission of your project, okay? It's just that it's unfortunate, okay, uh, when I received my grant, I received it in 2019, and uh, everything, all the agreement uh, are being finalized at the end of 2019, and suddenly in 2020, we have this pandemic. But somehow, uh, um, yeah, our group, okay, our teams try, try uh, our best, okay, just to stick uh, with whatever we have promised to the funder. Okay, so this is what we have we have come up so far um, uh, with the, first, the 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 mangrove grant. Okay, uh, uh, so we had a uh, few visits. Okay, uh, actually we have already uh, chosen our site, which is in, in Sijangkang, uh, Banting. All right, and we have um, one one actually um, like uh, online. Uh, kita panggil online meeting. Okay. But we need to have it again uh, this year. So, um, so we try to stick uh, with the vision and mission of this project. So basically, um, luckily, it is more or less more on the use of technology. So I think uh, the way forward in terms of um, executing it, this is uh, to have it uh, you know, by using this website. Lah. So we have, uh, we have here, uh, we have basically developed this website, uh, Meta the org.my uh, please feel free to visit it so uh, after this uh, all the collaborators will start to somehow share share knowledge in terms of okay we have few elements uh, in the project we have the diversity mangrove climate change water quality and social economic and um, uh, we will try uh, to somehow um, share this with the community okay I, i'm really thankful for my uh, for the these three ladies for helping uh, you know, in terms of developing this uh, website. And uh, again, uh, uh, for the research grant from the RSC and Gambrief, um, uh, the funder uh, would really want us to somehow come up with a product. So just yesterday, we had an interview with the Inoha uh, uh, to, to basically, go, I'm, I'm encouraging my postdoc actually, okay, we have the three postdoc. Uh, to start with a like a small startup company, um, basically trying to at least uh, come up with the first product, okay, which is which are the quarantine crunches incorporated life feed for shrimp disease control. Uh, these are in collaboration uh, with our partner, which is Dr. Zaliha Kasim uh, from UIA. And other than that, uh, we tried, okay, um, okay, um, Last year, we also somehow, uh, although the project is not finalized, okay, although uh, I just, because uh, our department you know, uh, organized this, basically we are the host of this uh, International Future Symposium in 2019, okay. Uh, I just uh, use whatever that I have just to come up with a special session. So later, when the grant is finalized, at least I have something to report, okay. So, um, yeah, just try your best, okay, in whatever situation. All right, so in applying, uh, it, it's actually um, in receiving international grants, just like uh, I tried so many times actually, uh, um, you know, applying for international grant, but some, like, setelah berpuluh-puluh kali, tiba-tiba uh, dapat pula dapat pula dua. So, I think um, the harder you try, uh, the luckier you get. Okay, so keep on trying, learn from the comments uh, or all failures, okay, and have a proposal bank. Right, and uh, keep on um, you know, doing your best. Okay, um, macam ni lah. Praise the car, and in my case, uh, I did do some nazar when I'm applying for this grant, uh, and then uh, and one of the nazar is actually to contribute back to the community. So that's why uh, when people invite me for to give talk or whatever, I will never reject. Okay, it's because it is part of my nazar. I think that's all for today. I hope I'm not taking too long. I'm not so sure what is time today <laughs> uh, now. <laughs> Now it's uh, 10.41, uh, okay. right. it's okay, so it's okay. about time. All right.
Okay, okay so thank you. <laughs> thank you very much, uh, Dr. Nasra, for having a very uh, impression, uh, inspirational punya talk. Okay, so you share your experience, so your take-home message is really good. For example, for uh, middle, young uh, <laughs> academia, right? And then in terms of tips and tricks uh, during, for example, how to approach in terms of international punya grind, right? Yeah? So really excellent punya presentation dan juga sharing lah. Okay, so now uh, we uh, go into question and answer. Uh, so I will start with Prof Aziz. Okay, Prof. So there are two questions for Prof. Right. So question number one uh, from Ayah Kuas uh, from Podixon. So private grant is quite difficult to get. Sometimes we don't know where to start. Could Prof share some tips to engage with insider, for example? Then how to start and success with private grant application? Yeah, because for example, with the private grant is quite uh, tricky. Sometimes people come to us, we have a meeting and then we have, uh, you need to go for, for example, at their place. At the end, we don't have uh, anything out of that. So how to, what is your strategy actually? How to engage with them and then, uh, for example, from start, towards the end to make sure that we can, uh, for example, secure that project. Uh, thank you, Dr. Fikri. Uh, it, it came from uh, I Equos, a researcher. That's, I don't know who is the person, but mm -hmm. uh, well, uh, it's a good question anyway. It's always a, a, a difficult task to get the uh, funding from the private sector. Because uh, in most cases, they wanted to utilize our research output uh, without having to invest. Yeah, I agree, bro. <laughs> this, this is the common scenario that we have in the country. Because uh, not like maybe other uh, developed country, they put certain uh, percentage for R&D, uh, which is uh, uh, together with NUSI, they come up with uh, a good partnership. In the case of uh, Forest City, actually, uh, it's just a uh, matter, a bit of uh, coincidence. Uh, plus, uh, we know uh, the people who are behind the uh, person, uh, behind the company, who uh, have the uh, job of uh, trying to uh, look for uh, people who can do the job of. Uh, monitoring of the grass ecosystem and also conservation. The reason being, uh, let me tell a bit of some history there uh, to the person, because we were in uh, uh, that area of uh, Glampata grass bed or Marapong grass bed as early as uh, in late 80s. So at that time, there is no port there's no forest city. It's a full bloom of seagrass there in uh, 88, 89. And uh, we used to get a lot of uh, research done there and we have a good comprehensive data uh, established. We show that to the company that we have a good uh, uh, understanding of the seagrass system in this place. And uh, if we were hired, we will give a good uh, uh, output uh, to the job that they are looking for, to the task of uh, hiring uh, experts to advise them on the uh, uh, conservation of the seagrass ecosystem, as well as the uh, uh, commitment of a submitting report to the Department of Environment Johor. So, uh, considering we were there long before they came in, and uh, then when they came in, we know the people, some of the people who are working uh, in the forest city, dealing with the uh, environment. We quickly uh, go through that channel, and uh, that's how we got the project. Definitely, it's, uh, it's not a, a quick one uh, as well, 
we spend time writing proposal Dr. Lina uh, project for their inputs and uh, we at the end be rewarded with uh, about two million of uh, research fund for the uh, contract research. So uh, strategy is uh, to zoom into the people who are connected to the task of uh, conservation and environmental monitoring for Forest City. We tackle the person and from there on we show our uh, strength, our show, we show our good track records that we have in that area of Marambo, which uh, as I said, we have been there for years or decades before they came in. I think that's uh, answered the person question, Dr. Fikri. Yeah. Uh, how long actually, bro, uh, the process will take? For, for example, you start your proposal until you get the grant, just to get uh, an idea about in terms of the duration. Yeah, it's, you can uh, remember. Right. I think it's more than six months, close to mm -hmm. a year. In okay, terms of engagement between mm -hmm. us and the person, uh, mm -hmm. the officer from, uh, from the Forest City, and then okay. uh, we wrote a proposal. So okay. engagement is, uh, is, is the critical part because uh, that way they, they want to know the uh, kind of uh, output that we would be delivering to them apart from the report that they had to hand over to the Department of Environment Johor is mm -hmm. what are things that they can gain from and from there is something of added value to Forest City because uh, before we came in or before the project has been approved, the impression of many uh, people in the country is they are destroying the seagrass ecosystem. But the work of Projapa and Pramutahara came up with a, a different uh, a finding that it can go together. I mean, conservation can go along with development, provided you know how to, you know the way to go and, and overcome the, the destruction due to the development. Okay. Uh, so that means sometimes technology know who is quite important also, bro, right? Eh? Yeah. <laughs> uh, yes, technology uh, know how technology know who is also yes, you, you, you are correct Dr. Fikri in terms of private uh, sector engagement or funding we need to know the person okay, we see. have a prior engagement before the proposal is being submitted okay so I have uh, one more question here from our chat box so uh, hi all uh, from Ina Salwani I am Ina from UPM. Question pro, uh, to Prof. Aziz. For example, we have international research collaboration in sharing the data and materials such as genomic samples. However, restriction of ethical and legal concern is one of the challenge. Mm -hmm. The researchers from both universities need to have a proper MPA and other agreement that is time consuming. So what is your opinion on this issue? Uh, thank you, Dr. Ina. Uh, she's uh, my colleague too. But of course, uh, uh, that is part of the thing that you have to uh, tackle uh, during the international collaboration. In our case, uh, in my case, in my working group on the biofish biodiversity, we have to address of the uh, transfer of samples. Let's say nation sample to be brought over to Japan. They have to abide to the rule of the Malaysian. So uh, they have to be obliged. We had to be a uh, signatory to that as well. Meaning that uh, we are okay on our part and they are okay on their part, then only uh, Thing, a matter of collaboration can take shape. In case of Dr. Ina, I understand that that is quite a crucial matter that always been brought up in any of the international collaborative efforts. Uh, agreements or way to 
handle the matter need to be discussed in the beginning during the earlier formulation of the project. Once it, there is a way to go along with it, then perhaps we can always uh, uh, be part of the the big uh, collaboration effort. I think uh, uh, th that's my answer for it, Dottina. Okay, thank you, Prof. So for I have Dr. a question for Prof. Aziz. Uh, okay. <laughs> and... Prof, uh, I just want to hear your advice, you know, for to us, the middle stage, um, uh, how to say, um, researcher, okay, where we start to hold posts uh, in, the, in the faculty or in the institute. Any advice in terms of how to be bold in terms of, you know, when there are challenges or anything and how to juggle with your work and also family? Well, uh, <laughs> I would expect that uh, Dr. Natra will ask such a question. <laughs> she just nearly been appointed to be the deputy dean of research of the faculty. Well, it's not easy, uh, Dr. Natra. Uh, when you are given the responsibility, you have to think of uh, uh, of of uh, trying to make to give your best to the responsibility that you're given. All my years in UPM, I think, uh, starting from. Uh, head of level three of uh, IBS three years. Then I went to sign and become the head department for a year. Then came to uh, faculty of Tanyan with uh, three years of uh, deputy dean post that you're holding now. And uh, seven years of, uh, of directorship with ICO. All that seemed to be continuous. So about 12 or 13 years of uh, administrative duties along the way. It make it hard, actually, if you are alone. But uh, the way I look into it, I work in, in a good uh, uh, group of people who are, uh, who are working at, at, at a, a good uh, productive rates. Uh, I have research group that is contributing toward the publication. If I, I don't do it, Dr. Amin will do it. And uh, Prof. Fatima will chip in with her papers and things like that. So do uh, have some thought on that. Never work alone, especially when you have administrative duty. Work in a group. Big group is even better. And that's how to go forward, uh, Dr. Natra. You won't be uh, having some era of uh, barren publication or something like that. Uh, you will have uh, uh, your uh, general contribution uh, each year at a good rates and at good numbers. And at the same time, uh, you have equal time, good time too with your family members as well, because they are part of yourself as well too. So uh, the way I have been doing all this well, is to, to have that research group and my lucky my research group is working uh, efficiently in terms of uh, research thank you thank you thank you prof oh, very <laughs> very good advice for all of us i think right mm -hmm. uh maybe i have a one question uh for dr uh, farah right so, uh, uh, sorry, Dr. Natra. All right, sorry. So, Dr. Natra, for example, uh, if we involve in international uh, research grant, uh, for example, I also have one international research grant. So, we have uh, two, sometimes uh, yeah, we consider too many partners, you know. Uh, sometimes that partners can be okay, good, and then sometimes that partner will be in opposite side, in another spectrum. Okay, so how you manage so far with uh, your current project uh, in terms of partner, especially international partners, because local partners, more or less, we can, uh, yeah, we can have a close contact, we can call them and then we can, yeah, have a good relationship with them. But international partners, sometimes we, uh, some sort of uh, uh, match with them and then, yeah, so in terms of your experience, how you manage that? 
Okay, uh, so in my case, uh, so far, I'm very fortunate that I have all good partners, okay. Mm -hmm. But then, um, I think normally these partners, um, sometimes uh, it's also important to always uh, keep them updated with your current progress and also, um, you know, uh, you really have, they're also looking it's like normal human being they want something for them too so if you can somehow uh, help them in getting something for them yeah i think this problem would occur like try to give me like, gula-gula sikit lah kat dia orang kan what type of it would help the kpi uh, uh, try to have this win-win thing Mm -hmm. I know there are difficult partner it exists, but I know this psychology of human, okay, um, all humans wants to be appreciated uh, and they want somehow their contribution being respected and they want something for them. So at least, okay, uh, give them something and then try how it can go from there. Okay. And then one more question, uh, in your opinion, what is the main challenge during the development of, uh, for example, this strategic uh, partnership in Punya Grant? What is the main challenge based on your experience, based on your uh, current research grant? And then how, for example, you try to overcome that challenge? Yeah, our current challenge is actually this pandemic. Of course, uh, it's yeah. some how uh, unexpected is the thing that we are we have been planning okay especially for the mangrove grant we actually plan uh, quite a number of activities with the people with the community in Kampusi Jangkang uh, so I'm still thinking how to go about it but I think um, somehow we have to get used to this Okay, so online thing, having webinar, and then probably uh, I would also encourage the people in the Kampus Jangkang to somehow collaborate with us online with all the collaborators, um, you know, within the project lah. So that is why uh, for the time being we have we first developed this website, where uh, at the end uh, the kampung the uh, uh, the villages will basically maintain the website, okay. And then, uh, and at the same time, we, we will have this input from all these collaborators uh, and everything will go online. I think that is the main challenge for the time. <laughs> so, that's, this is uh, more or less in terms of the communication uh, challenge, lah, eh? Betul, betul. Okay, okay. And then, uh, uh, maybe one last question for uh, Prof Aziz. Okay, so for example, uh, you said about uh, LRGS, TRGS, uh, basically for LRGS, so you have, uh, uh, you need to engage with, uh, for example, uh, top scientists uh, in uh, from other IPTA. Uh, I think uh, for you is quite easy because you are very well known. Eh? <laughs> uh, maybe any advice for maybe, uh, uh, middle or uh, young lecturer so how to approach them and then how to get them into the project okay thank you uh mike uh mute bro sorry uh uh, uh the way i look at it dr vikri uh whether you uh at your young or intermediates or the, the veteran. Uh, the veteran, of course, had the benefit of longer period of uh, networking with people. Kalau uh, in Malaysia, I know everybody who work on fish biodiversity, uh, marine ecology and things like that. So for the young one, and uh, definitely the Dr. Natra uh, age groups, uh, she already have uh, a good uh, exposure to the people who share the same interest. Uh, for the young one, it's just the beginning. This is a challenge for them. But try to get to know people who are in other institutions 
not only university, but other research institutions, uh, PORIM, uh, FRI, those are uh, potential people who can perhaps come in us, come and join us in, in a bidding of project and things like that, and sharing of the research facilities. So uh, the, it, it's a matter of opening up. When you attend, of course, this year or the, the year 2030 is not the conducive platform. For yeah, to go out. That's, that's true, bro. Yeah, so uh, in terms of networking, it, 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 to the lowest level. When we were open uh, last time, take the chance to meet people, say hello, uh, salam, and, and talk to the seniors uh, in your area and get to know them. Let them know that you are also uh, in the area, sharing the same interest and willing to look, be part of the big uh, group working on genetic, working on ecoculture, working on uh, physiology or something like that. So that way is how you introduce yourself. Uh, they will find that uh, later on uh, your specialty and what is your strength in, in all this. Saya ada masa lagi ya, sikit lagi. Ha, boleh lagi bro. Saya nak, saya nak uh, say something about strategic partnership. I look at more on the international collaboration really. The limitation that we have all this while is the funding. Uh, we want to collaborate with our uh, partners in, in other part of the world that we, that we know through many uh, various platforms or conferences, uh, seminars. But uh, in order to, to, to engage in, in that strategic planning, discussion, and, and you need to go there as well. So that's the problem. And we don't have funding, we can't go but much on the strategic partnership. That's what I learned. I, I remember Natra followed me to Taiwan and, and uh, National Chen Kung. They are very good with uh, uh, the work that Natra is doing. But uh, we don't have much fund at the time to proceed. We have MOU for five years, but we don't utilize it fully. So uh, funding is, uh, to me, is, is, is critical, is essential for strategy partnership, especially at the at an international level. All right. So thank you very much, uh, uh, Prof. Aziz, uh, Dr. Natra, for uh, sharing your experience with us, with all of the participants. So we have today around 60 participants who um, attended yeah. this, uh, the, this workshop, uh, this talk, right? Yeah. So maybe I can uh, conclude, right? So for example, for develop the convincing strategic partnership grants for research and community. So what we need to do is we first, we need to make ourselves visible. We need to keep, uh, for example, working in terms of uh, proposal. And then we need to have a very good networking. And then we need to have a very good uh, partner. Right, and then in, in to do that, for example, we need to more expose to the not only, uh, for example, inside the university. So we need to go outside also, uh, for example, for private company and also for other community which has the related, uh, more or less, uh, knowledge and experience, something like us, right? So uh, I think uh, that comes to the end of our uh, sharing session. Okay. So thank you again uh, for uh, Prof. Aziz and then uh, Associate thank you very Professor much. Uh, Dr. Natra. Dr. Natra. And uh, the most important thing is thank to everyone who make uh, your time in order to attend this uh, sharing session with uh, IACWAS. All right, so uh, see you in uh, the next IAQWAS webinar series. With that, wabilahi taufiq wa hidayah. Wassalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. And thank you. Thank you, everyone. Thank you. Bye.